we start with very simple definitions of complex algebra. For those of you who are already familiar with the subject and want to jump on more interesting topics like differentiation or integration, please be patient, you won't have to wait long. But for those of you who have somewhat vague idea about complex numbers, this is the right time for you to board the train. And here we go. So the complex number is basically a pair of real numbers, x and y, organized as follows, x plus i, y, where x is called the real part of complex number z, while y is called an imaginary part of z. And i squared is equal to negative 1. It's easy to construct a multiplication rule, like z1 times z2 is equal to x1 plus i y1 times x2 plus i y2, which yields x1 x2 minus y1 y2 as a real part of a new complex number, plus i times x1 y2 plus x2 y1, and this forms an imaginary part of a new complex number. It immediately follows that complex numbers inherit commutativity and distributivity from the real ones. But less trivial fact is that complex numbers can actually be divided. So how do you define the division? Well, suppose you want to solve an equation for z. z1 times z equals z2. Well, formally speaking, z is equal to z2 divided by z1, or z2 multiplied by z1 to the power of negative 1. But how do you actually divide these two complex numbers, z2 and z1? Well, for example, z1 is real, then everything is simple. z1 is equal to x1. Then z is simply equal to z2, which is x2 plus i y2, divided by the real number x1, and you divide separately the real part of this number and the imaginary part, and you obtain the complex number x2 divided by x1 plus i y2 divided by x1. Now let's suppose that z1 is complex, then what to do? Before proceeding, let's introduce one more important notion. Suppose you have a complex number z, which is equal to x plus i y. Then we introduce the complex conjugate of z, which is by definition is equal to x minus i y. The important property of these two complex numbers is that their product gives real number. Indeed, z times z star is equal to x squared plus y squared. And one more important definition. The modulus of the complex number is equal to the square root of its real part squared plus its imaginary part squared, x squared plus y squared. So the product of z and its complex conjugate is equal to its modulus squared. All right, and now let's return to our original equation. Let's multiply both parts of it by z1 star. Then in the left-hand side, we see that z1 star times z1 is a simple real number, x1 squared plus y1 squared. And then we can easily isolate z in the left-hand side. We simply divide this both parts of this equation by this real number, and we obtain z equals z2 times z1 star divided by z1 modulus squared. And this right-hand side is actually what we call the ratio of two complex numbers, z2 and z1. And basically that means that z1 to the power of minus 1 is defined, as you see, as z1 star divided by the square of its modulus. And let's consider some quick example. Suppose you want to solve an equation z times 1 plus 2i is equal to 3 plus i. Then, formally speaking, z equals 3 plus i divided by 1 plus 2i. And now we need to get rid of the complex number in the denominator of the right-hand side. So what you do, you multiply the nominator and denominator by its complex conjugate. So you have 3 plus i times 1 minus 2i divided by 1 plus 2i times 1 minus 2i. So now your denominator is a real number. It's 5. Well, your denominator is easily computed using the definition of the product of two complex numbers. So it's simply 5 minus 5i. And you obtain 1 minus i. And indeed, once you plug in this solution into your original expression, you obtain the valid identity. So what was discussed so far was called, in fact, an algebraic representation of a complex number. And then there is another representation, which is 
also very powerful and very suitable. It's a geometric interpretation. Since a complex number is defined by a pair of real numbers, then the idea is to represent a complex number as a dot in a two-dimensional plane. So let's draw a complex plane with horizontal coordinate x and vertical coordinate i, y, and represent a complex number by a dot with x coordinate equal to the real part of our complex number and vertical coordinate by y. And another way of representing the same complex number is by a radius vector pointing at this point. So the length of this vector is in fact the modulus of our complex number, as follows from Pythagorean theorem. Now this vector representation of a complex number inherits the operation of addition and subtraction from algebraic form. For example, the difference or sum of two complex numbers like z1 and z2 may be recast in terms of their difference and sum of corresponding vectors in the complex plane. Well, suppose you have a complex number with components x1 and y1, and you want to add a complex number with components x2 and y2. So what you do? You draw a first complex number, and then you draw a second vector with components x2 and y2 from the endpoint of the first vector. And the resulting vector has the components x1 plus x2 and y1 and y2. But to understand better how a geometrical nature of complex number works, let's solve a simple problem. Let's draw a locus of point defined by the following equation. The modulus of z plus 1 is equal to 2. So let's try to understand how this equation works in a complex plane. There is some number z, and we want to add complex number 1. And what is complex number 1? It's a simple vector directed along the real axis to the right with unit modulus. And so the sum of these two vectors is this vector. So whenever we direct our complex number z, we always write down the vector sum by the same rule. Not very transparent, isn't it? Well, the easiest way to work with the sum of complex numbers is to represent them as difference of two vectors. For example, let's rewrite z plus 1 as z minus negative 1. And let's draw the same picture. So here is our complex number z. And here is our vector negative 1. Now it points to the left. And here is the difference of two vectors. And wherever our z complex number goes, we restore this difference by the same rule. So basically, what we have here is a rotating arrow with the origin at point negative 1, and the modulus should be equal to 2. So what we obtain is a circle with radius 2 with the center at point negative 1. And of course, you may solve the same problem with algebraic means. So you just rewrite your complex number z as x plus i y, plug it in into your equation, and obtain that the modulus of complex number x plus 1 plus i y is equal to 2. Then you square both parts of this equation and expand the left-hand side, like x plus 1 squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And of course you obtain the same circle with the same radius. But the geometric solution seems to be more elegant. And on our next slide we'll introduce a new representation of a complex number, which is called a trigonometric form, and we'll explain how it is related to just discussed geometrical representation. Thank you.